Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Emily and on this channel we talk about all things bookish, vacation vlogs, college life, so please subscribe. But today I've been getting a lot of comments on my Instagram and on YouTube to say, hey, show us your Kindle, give us a little Kindle tour, give us Kindle Unlimited recommendations. And I would absolutely love to, but my Kindle actually broke and I've been using the Kindle app on my phone. And also all I've been reading for the past couple of months have been Kindle Unlimited books. However, I haven't had one that has been a five, mm, I just lied to you one book the second book in the windy city series that's my kindle unlimited recommendation you guys read that series right now but aside from the second book in that series i have not found one five star and i don't want to do a video giving you guys recommendations if i don't like any of the books that i'm recommending so i thought i would do a video like this where i test out popular kindle unlimited recommendations and tell you if they're worth it or not i know that if somebody would have told me that half the books that i read weren't worth the hype i would have focused my attention elsewhere and would have loved what i was reading so i'm trying to do the same thing for you and i also wanted to say that all these books aren't going to be in the genre of adult romance because i promised myself at the beginning of the year that i would be more diverse in the genres that I was reading and at the beginning I was doing really good with that promise but now all I'm reading is adult romance so the first book that I am reading is the first book in the mindfuck series which I believe is called The Risk this book guys is so popular everybody loves it it's about this girl named Lana and when she was 16 she got tortured by a group of guys and so 10 years later she's torturing and murdering each one one by one and there's another guy in the situation and he is an fbi agent and he is trying to find the killer and they start falling for each other but he doesn't know that she's the killer it's a little murder romance and i absolutely adore that but now that i'm halfway through it i'm a little scared that it's too short like that's my biggest fear is that i won't feel connected to these characters because it's 134 pages i'm 66 pages in and people say that this is the best book this best series and that they love it but i don't know i'm a little scared so far the writing is good it's very very simple easy to get through because most of it is dialogue and one thing about me is I love the witty banter I love the interactions between characters so since it's mostly dialogue it's going by fairly quickly however I'm not very interested in the characters yet I'm very interested to see how they progress and to get their backstory a little bit more and I'm very excited to see the ending because everybody raves about this book even this morning I literally got a dm on instagram saying Emily you need to read this ASAP. It was my favorite series of last year. And I'm actually quite excited because people say that the cliffhangers are insane. But now I'm thinking, am I hyping it up too much in my brain? Am I just, no matter what happens, am I gonna be disappointed? So I don't know, but I will let you guys know and let me finish this book. Number one, I found my old Kindle that I used to use in elementary school and it's so slow, but I found it funny that I found it right when I was doing this video. And number two, I finished The Risk and I was 100 pages into it, 32 pages from ending. And I was like, oh my gosh, where is this going to go? Like what's happening right now? Because I feel like it's so short that I it didn't give me enough. I still was not really super connected to the characters. I still was 
intrigued and wanted to know more but i feel like you have to read this book or this series back to back to back like one after the other and it's a six book series so i wish the author would have just done book one and three like as one book and four and six as one book and just have two books and have it be a duology because i'm sitting here and i'm struggling to figure out what rating to give it like should i give it a 3.5 a 4 because i feel like we've just begun oh my gosh my cat She's funny. Anyway, what was I saying? I'm debating on whether to give it like a 3.5 to a 4 stars because it's just begun. Like, I feel like we didn't get enough from this book. I also feel like I built it up in my head a little bit. Like, the ending cliffhanger was there. I was like, oh crap, what's the next book going to be about? But at the same time, I kind of expected her to get kidnapped, which was just a little bit too crazy. I put myself too out there and expected a little bit too much. But you can't blame me because she just finished killing two people and he still doesn't know it was her. Like, what? Are you kidding me? Now, would I recommend it? I actually would. I feel like it's very short and fun and fast and if you're trying to get yourself out of a reading slump or try to give yourself a reprieve from reading all adult romance or all fantasy or all science fiction, I don't know, I feel like this book is a really good way to give yourself a thriller with a mix of fantasy and if you don't like it, you only wasted two hours of your life. It's something that you can read all in one sitting. So I would recommend it. I feel like it's setting up for a good five star series but for right now, 3.5 to a four star book. But the next book I'm reading, I hope is not horrendous. Going back to the adult romance, I couldn't stay away from it for too long. It is King of Wrath by Anna Huang. Anna Huang. She is the author of the Twisted Love series. I really enjoyed that series. I've read all four books. I didn't love the first one, but I'm a little scared for this book because everybody says it's a darker romance and I don't mind darker romances. I enjoy some spice, but I really need it to be rooted in romance, like true romance. So I feel like those aren't really focused on that. It's also a arranged marriage kind of rich people romance so I'm hoping that I'll like it I want to give it a chance because I really did like the Twisted Love series but okay I feel like I've talked your ear off let's go I like to be educated but I'm so frustrated just a quick update right now i'm about 100 pages in and why is this book so good i did not expect it to be this good like maybe better than the twisted love series i'm not even joking and there's like a few cameos of the twisted love people in this book literally obsessed but let me go get my starbucks and let me go get my cat because she just got spayed today so she's gonna be really sad okay bye Hey guys, so I just came back from a little book fair, cheap book fair that my county had. And I thought I would show you the books that I got because I was honestly not sure if I was going to get anything. But the first thing I saw was The Kite Runner. And I was like, oh, everybody raves about this book. It was $2. And the girl next to me, because there was two copies, she was like, oh my gosh, favorite book of all time. I need to get it. So I got it. And... It looks, it's kind of beat up, but I'm actually so excited about it. And then the second book I got, which is in great condition, is Memorial by Brian Washington. I've already read this book for a video, I think, reading Uncarly's favorite books, and I enjoyed it. But usually, I got it from the library the first time. So usually books that I buy in the library or on Kindle, I'm always like, oh, I wish I would have bought it. But I have other books on my TBR that I should buy first for $3. I was like, come on, come on. I have to get it, and it's in amazing condition. And then the last two books that I got... Our children, oh, where's the other one? Our children's books, both of them upside down, and both of them are half in Spanish. If you don't know, I'm Hispanic, and when I'm at, when I was younger, my mom never taught me Spanish. I basically only know Spanglish at the moment, so I thought I would learn for real. I'm on that journey, and so I was like, let me read this. Let me see if I can actually understand it. And then my boyfriend has a sister, and she has a daughter, like a new, like a toddler daughter that. I thought she could read this too so that was four books for six dollars and i thought that was really great and that the video 
that you guys would like that little adventure that we just went on but i know you guys are still wondering did you finish king of wrath yes i did yes i did and guys something about this book i don't know what it is about this book but i just had such a fun time reading it it's a must read for you i'm telling you right now i recommend it if you love anna huang you need to read this book and the series because i think there's another one out already i mean let's be honest it's nothing unique or original i mean there's a billion billionaire romances out there and there's a billion arranged marriage tropes that you can read but come on something about this book i'm just like i just had such a fun time the romance was so wholesome perfect balance between romance and spice i couldn't stop smiling at their cute moments dante and vivian oh my gosh and i loved the family aspect in the, this novel both vivian and dante are having some issues with family and so they really learn to speak up for themselves and for dante not become the father and actually become a brother and for vivian actually stick up for who she wants to be and not only do what her father wants for her the ending was cute and the third act conflict actually happened at the 80 percent mark so we definitely had 20 percent left for him to grovel and get her back and grovel he did because oh my gosh when he was trying to get her back he was just so like dante come on let's let's come in real life and let me just meet you for a second but i definitely found a new book boyfriend um but aside from that i gave it a 4.5 to a 5 star i just really truly loved it but for the next book that i want to read i was thinking between the handmaid's tale or if he'd been with me and i thought hey we had already read a thriller so let's read a ya sad romance i think it is i have high expectations for this book everybody raves about that book and says that i bawled and it was so amazing so i thought let me see if i actually cry hello it has been a while i am 50 percent through if he'd been with me it has been a while because i went and moved into my new apartment for college. I am like maybe a three, four weeks into college and I've only gotten 50% through this book. This is the longest book that I'm reading for this video. Also, it might be echoey and I know the lighting is bad, but we're just gonna deal with it for this clip, okay? But it's been a while since I've updated you guys. I just, life got in the way. However, let's talk about the book. Let's talk about what I'm thinking. The writing is so overly simplistic that I just did not expect it. I can't remember if I told you what this book is about, but basically so far, She's just reiterating everything that happened in her past with her and this boy that she has been like in love with since she was a child and been best friends with since she was a child because her parents were best friends. So they became best friends. And then it shows them having a falling out. So right now we're in the point where they're in a falling out in high school. And like they say hi to each other and they still see each other pretty much every weekend, but they're not very talkative. And then we get to a point where she's like, I can't be his friend because I'm in love with him. And if I'm his friend, and then it's all gonna fall apart. My relationship, my friend group, everything. But the writing is so overly simplistic that I just did not expect it. It's very blunt, it's very to the point. And honestly, I'm liking it. Some people hate it, some people love it. I genuinely like it. I've heard a lot of comments that you either love this book or you hate this book and it gives so much to you or it doesn't give enough. Personally, it's giving. For me, it's giving. However, I want a bit more. I feel like we still see the connection between Vinny and the main character. We see that they both care about each other, but we're not seeing any interactions like whatsoever. And that's what I want. If you know me and my channel, I love dialogue. If you saw my persuasion vlog, I could not shut up about how there was no dialogue. And I need dialogue and I need dialogue between them. So I'm hoping now that we're past 50% that it'll be fine and it'll be good. And we can finally get something between between them but I don't know I'm ready to be wrecked because I know that people say that this book breaks their soul breaks their soul yeah okay but I promise you guys next clip will be a lot better than this one and more coherent and just better all around okay love you guys Hey guys, so it's been a while since I last updated you. I'm back at college. I actually finished the book a couple days ago and as you could see, 
I was a little distraught. I cried and honestly I was a little scared that I wouldn't like this book because I was reading it in spurts like reading it here and there and I just felt like I wouldn't be connected to the characters along with the writing style being very simple and plain and I was just like mm, I don't know if I could be connected and also throughout the entire book about 60% of it it wasn't really her and Finney's relationship it was her and this other guy Jamie's relationship and her friend group and so I was like how am I going to be connected to the characters at the end? but once I sat down and was like we're gonna finish this book oh my gosh oh my gosh my cat scared me she's trying to get out of the freaking door anyway once I sat down and finished the book you just realize oh my gosh yes a lot of her relationship with Jamie and her friends are kind of in the forefront but it makes she's always thinking about Finny no matter what she's always thinking about him and then it makes the little small moments between them so much more adorable and special and then once they become friends and then you know into a, a more romantic relationship you are just obsessed you're so connected you literally feel like they're molded and made just for each other and then when the plot twist hits it's like whoa like you know from the beginning something bad is gonna happen if you guys know the book we were liars there's this big build up where you're like where is this book going and then the huge plot twist that's kind of how this book was and it was just like it was crazy you knew something bad was gonna happen at the beginning but then it did and you're like i didn't get enough time with these people i want more of them we didn't get enough time and i don't know I really enjoyed it. I was struggling between giving it like a 4 point, I think in reality it's a 4.25 to a 4.5, but I think I'm going to round it up for a 5 star on Goodreads. I really enjoyed it. And if you guys are thinking about reading it, I think it's a really good palette cleanser. If you're huge into like romance, this has romance in it, but it's more of like a somber romance. If you're really into fantasy, this is a really good palette cleanser. So do I recommend it? 100%. And I feel like this video was so good. And I think I realize what I'm doing wrong usually is that I shouldn't be getting recommendations off of TikTok. Go to booktube and figure it out, man, because I don't know, maybe I should do another video like this. Let me know. But that's all for the video. I hope you guys really liked watching it. I have no idea. But yeah, thanks for watching and bye.